to with Mr. Adams? How to with Mr. Adams? How to with... Hi, and welcome to part two of finding the area of complex shapes, finding the surface area of complex shapes. So that's your learning goal. How are we going to find the area of shapes that look similar to this one right here? Uh, what we have here, as you can see, is it is a cube. All dimensions are equal. Five meters is its height. Five meters is its width. And five meters is its depth. So this is a perfect cube. And we have a cylinder. It kind of looks like almost a chimney. Uh, what you're going to need to determine on this shape is what is the surface area of the entire shape. So all, even the bottom, including the bottom. The radius of this circle at the top is given to you is 0.5 meters. So first thing I like to do is I like to identify what the different shapes are in there. So I'm going to call one of these faces of my cube A and I'm going to call my cylinder B. So let's start with A. I know the area of a cube is length times width. So my area of this cube is going to be 5 times 5, right? So if one of these faces, it's 5 times 5. So my area of one face of my cube is going to be 25 meters squared. Sometimes I like to redraw the picture just to have it as well, if you want to add that in, so you know that one square of your cube is 5 by 5 meters. So if it was 5 by 5, I know my length and my width is 5 and 5, which gives me 25 meters. Now, there are six sides, six faces on a cube. So in order to find out my surface area of this entire cube, I need to multiply that answer times 6. So my area of the cube is... 150 meters squared. So that's part of my answer. Now I'm going to redraw B over here. So B is a cylinder. Looks kind of like this. I know the radius is 0 0.5 meters and I know its height is 3 meters. Now, if you recall, there's a couple steps you need to take in order to determine the area of a cylinder like this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to determine the area. So we're going to call my circles. And I'll just draw a little dotted line here so we can see the bottom one. I'm going to call this bottom circle B1. So this is B1 and this is also B1. They're the same. And I'm going to call the body of my cylinder B2. So let's find the area of 1 B1 to start with. So we'll look for B1. This is the area of a circle. So remember the area of a circle is area is pi r squared. Okay. Area equals, I'm going to just use 3.14 times my radius, which is 0.5. And notice how I'm always making my substitutions in brackets. Just need to check my time of my video here. Okay, good. Uh, my substitution that I'm always going to put in brackets. Now, following Bedmus, I need to make sure I go brackets first. Are there any operations happening inside the brackets? No, they're just numbers. There's no operations happening inside the brackets. Then I'm going to look at exponents. Yes, I have an exponent here. So it's 0.5 squared. I'm going to use my calculator on here. 0.5 times 0.5 equals... 0.25. So I'm going to rewrite that now. Area equals 3.14 times 0.25. Multiply those together. So I have 0.25 on my calculator times 3.14 equals 0 0.75. I'm going to use all three of those digits. Great. Now that gives me the area of one part of my cylinder, my bottom, but there's two circles that are identical. 
So I need to multiply that answer by 2 in order to find my area of B1, my area of both B1s. My B1s is so 0 0.785 times 2 equals 1.57 meters squared. Hey, Good. One second. Oh, yeah. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So the area of both my B1s would be 1.57. I'm going to underline that as that is another important piece of information. Now, if you recall, in order to find the area of the body of my cylinder, which is labeled B2, I need to know what the height is, and I need to know what the circumference of that cylinder is. Remember, if you take a cylinder, so if you look here on the, pit, uh, on the small webcam, here's a cylinder. If I can find what the circumference is, it's basically like I'm finding the area of a rectangle, right? Because when I, if I were to cut that cylinder in half, you just get a rectangle. And this dimension up here is what your circumference of your circle is. So we need to find the circumference of the circle because that'll give me my length and I'm already given my width of the rectangle, which is in this question, three meters. So I need to know what my length is of this shape. So that's what I'm going to do next is I'm going to find the area of B2, which I'll put right down here. First, I wanna find the circumference of a circle, which was two pi times the radius. That's just a formula that, that you're given. It works. So my circumference is going to equal 2 times pi. My radius is 0 0.5. Okay, I'm just going to put that all into my calculator. So 2 times, and I'm using 3 point, oops, can't really see that. 2 times 3.14 equals 6.28 times 0.5 equals, oh my god, 3.14. So my circumference of this circle up here is 3.14 meters. Okay, not done yet though. That's just giving me the circumference. Now I need to find the area of B2. So the area of B2 is going to be length times width. I know my length now the circumference that was the top part here is 3.14 and I'm going to multiply that by the height or the width which is 3 meters okay so 3.14 times 3 equals 9.42 and now this is my area of the body of my cylinder another important piece of information, 9.42 meters squared. Good, so you can see I have a few things underlined. I have 150 meters squared. I have 1.57 meters squared. And I have 9.42 meters squared. So I'm gonna add all those up together because I wanna find the surface area of this entire shape. So I've already found the surface area of all my cubes. I found the body of the cylinder and I found the top and the bottom of this so under the circular parts. So let's add them all up together. So 9.42 plus 1.57 plus 150. So I'm going to write this over here. The area of all shapes equals 160.99 meters squared. So I'm getting really close to being finished because this is not quite the answer we need. If you look at the shape, remember when we were talking about before, these overlapping parts, we need to get rid of those overlapping parts, okay? And the only overlapping part is the area of one of these circles. However, since we found the, uh, since we found the complete area of this cube and the complete area of this cylinder, we need to subtract it two times. Once off of the top of this cube, and once off of the bottom of this cylinder. So I'm going to go 160.99 meters squared. And I need to subtract two of these circles. 
So what is the area of two of the circles? Well, I already figured that out actually, and we added it in. We just need to remove it now. 1.57 meters squared. So when I subtract that, 160.99 minus 1.57, you will get a final answer of 159.42 meters squared. I'm going to circle that answer because it is, my, it is my final answer. And I will write a statement. Oops, sorry, it wasn't low enough. It wasn't high enough. Therefore, the surface area of the shape is One hundred fifty nine point four two meters squared. And then you're finished. So that is how you find the surface area of a complex object such as this one. Please let me know if you have any questions.